there's value in using multiple firewall vendors that'll keep the firewall train rolling since uh, since we were on that. Does the NSA really own us all? How can I be confident in the IT gear I'm buying? Oh, uh, the NSA. No, yes, There's... yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, in multiple firewall vendors, the logic there is that, well, if one firewall's got a vulnerability, then this other firewall that's from a different vendor with a different operating system uh, and different code behind it shouldn't have that same vulnerability. So this is kind of for people that build certain networks, like, okay, this is my Juniper network and this is my Arista network. And because they're different vendors and different operating systems, if the Arista blows up, the Juniper will keep going and vice versa. Um, so is there value in using multiple firewall vendors? I don't know too many people that, I've never worked in an environment where that's been done. Have any of you, uh, John, do you ever see this scenario or recommend this for a certain situation? No, I, I've not seen it and I don't recommend it. I mean, aside from the fact that, that now you've got two different stacks that you're supporting, you've got, you have to have different skill set for these, these different firewall vendors. You have to know how to use them or one of them is just going to be sitting there really just passing traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as the NSA really owning us, I know that's sort of a tongue in cheek question, but, um, you know, I think we've come to learn from a lot of news stories that have broken that it's you're between backdoors that have been put in place and then agreements that um, whether it's the U.S. government or other governments have put in place with certain software companies, there is. A legitimate concern that your privacy and data isn't really all there. The threat isn't merely from the NSA. There's other ways we get into data privacy and what's really happening uh, there. I don't think it's likely that there's a backdoor built into every firewall that's out there, although I don't know how one would go about proving such a thing, as sometimes it takes many years for such a backdoor to come to light. Um, how can you be confident in the IT gear that you're buying? Well, maybe you gotta you know, talk to somebody like a Skyport Systems that engineers the hardware of the box and there is a, a process that the box goes through so that even the hardware can't be compromised unless it passes the appropriate uh, signature checks and uh, certificate, uh, I believe there's a certificate authentication process that it goes through on the way up to make sure that even in the manufacturing chain, the box didn't get uh, compromised. I think, I think Cisco just bought mm -hmm. Skyport. Somebody bought Skyport you know, very recently. Um, so there are suppliers that cater to people who have a reason to be very paranoid about their hardware and and their software. Um, yet another concern here is, you know, does the NSA have the ability to you know hack into certain things without the manufacturer's permission and just keep it on the down low? Well, doesn't anybody? You know, isn't isn't there that opportunity on the part of any hacker that's out there? And so maybe the question isn't about you know governmental spying so much as just broadly speaking your vulnerability to uh, being hacked. And again, I think the answer comes back to: Do you have a business reason to be excessively paranoid about your data and data protection and privacy and so on? And if you do, and there's money that backs that up, I mean. Greg just said this a minute ago, you can spend an enormous amount of money on security and your security solution, okay? If you have that money and you're willing to spend that money to get some sort of advantage, I, I guess, but what most companies do... Oh, no. It, <laughs> oh, you're wearing oh, the no, hat. The hat. <laughs> but what most companies <laughs> do is they draw the line at a certain level of mitigation and state, and then make a choice. If we get hacked beyond this level that we're willing to spend, that's fine. We're insured from there. So if we get hacked, if there's a privacy breach, a data breach where data that should have been kept private is now public because we were hacked, eh, insurance is going to cover that. It's worth the risk. And so they just they draw a line. Well, so and that's that's really what like security in general is all about. Is is how much at risk am I? What's the cost of if I get breached, and what's the cost to secure it, and where's where's that trade-off end up? If it if it costs more to secure it than the breach is going to cost, then do I really care? Yeah. yeah, but most people don't have a rational, like most executives in particular, don't have a rational grown-up behavior around oh, no. IT security, <laughs> right? Explaining IT security to them is like uh, programming a computer with a hammer. It just doesn't work. And, <laughs> You just hit them with you hit them with some IT security stuff, and you just sit there and look at them, and go like, you know, they're all idiots, right? 
but increasingly that's changing. So the question really comes down to whether your executives can understand security and then ask them how much money they want to spend uh, on an insurance policy to prevent it. And that's really the whole problem with security is about is a business problem, not a technology problem as far as I'm concerned.